Thank you so much for hosting us in your this amazing home. Thank you. Uh, it's Thanks. absolutely beautiful. Um, and I wanted to just kind of ask you, because your 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 success story is kind of the quintessential American success story of you know immigrants building this country, right? right. Um, I'm just curious, you know, what was that experience like, like coming here and not knowing the language and. It's funny, you know. You don't, you don't ever think of yourself as successful, right? You know, it's it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, you're blessed. You have all these things, you know. But ultimately, you know, it's. Uh, well, came from someplace. Yeah, exactly. Right. And the success is really the people that you have in your life. Uh, you know, just asked, like, I, I remember, like, when I first came to America, I was 18 years old. And I, I didn't really speak much English, so, and I was in Seattle, and um, I started my first, my first day of college, and it was, uh, it was actually a program at UW for the English as second language, and, uh, and it was funny because I could barely really ask for how to get a sandwich and like you know and it was such a foreign place you know coming from I just had came from France at that time and, and it's just it was a different place with different people everyone speaking a different language and and somehow I, I made it through I, I stayed in that program for three months and ended up going to real university after that uh, but that was that was a long time ago right but you made a, a conscious choice because yeah. you could have you could have stayed in France. You could have you know things. You could have made your life much easier. Yeah. Why do you think you chose to come here? You know, I'm, I'm a. I grew up in Tunisia, North Africa, very small country, um, and you know you you watch TV, you watch Wall Street, you watch all these movies, Prince of Bel Air, and all these things, because yeah. that's that's what everyone grows up with, right? right? And. I always had this vision in my life that I wanted to be in America. I wanted to be in New York. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to do something different. And uh, and I ended up being here. And, and after going to Seattle and then coming down to LA, uh, my journey has kind of led me to being here in, in LA. Uh, but it was almost it was always a dream of mine to really end up in, in finance and in America. And and almost sometimes now it's it's funny to to think that I actually I am doing what I'm doing today because I my dad I would talk to my dad about this when I was 12 years old so you know. <laughs> but it was really a lot of it was built too on kind of the people that you kind of built relationships with right I mean that's that's kind of what got you from that point to where you are now you know success is I think a team game like a, it's a team sport like I, I would not be here today unless I had the partners that I have today and all the people all along like going back to my first teacher at Seattle who literally kind of took me around and like literally went to, to the grocery store once because I could not figure out how to buy stuff so she took me to the grocery <laughs> store to really kind of teach me how to use credit cards and this is 1999 you know so uh, you know to all the people along the way you know I, I struggled you know financially you know you're going to college your parents give you some money but you know you have to kind of make your, your way you did you know? a sort of a lot of small jobs I had a lot of small jobs I worked at bars I bounced I sold things at you know I, uh, parties and like you know organized events and you know I did all kinds of random jobs you know to, to, to put myself through college but it was fun you know you're 18 19 years old you know like you, you're, you're scrappy you don't care you, you know you do what you need to do you know and uh, but yeah along the way there was many many people that, that were able that were helped me just out of the goodness of their heart you know and, and, and I really could not imagine us being here today unless those people all along have done what they've done, you know? Coming here with, really, with nothing, working odd jobs, and now, you know, years later, you're a partner at one of the most successful financial firms in the country. Um, you know, the choice to join that firm was very important, right? And, and how, did you, how did you make that decision? You know, <laughs> In hindsight, you, you don't really, you don't really know that you're going to be here today. I think, 
a lot of it was trust in, in, in my partners at the time. Um, trust in, in, in what we were trying to do, the mission, the fact that we really wanted to democratize access to finance, we wanted to invest in sustainable things and energy, and we really wanted to uh, be a firm that, that really is open to new ideas and innovation and really embrace technology and embrace you know, the, the ability to help different people kind of get ahead in life and so forth, right? And well, one, of the, one of the founding partners was also an immigrant. Right. Yeah, yeah, Danilo is, is actually Brazilian, Brazil, Japanese Brazilian, and one of the impetus for me to join the firm, or at least to partner up with him at the time, was uh, he, before the firm, we, were part, we, we worked together before, but one of the impetus was he looked like me, <laughs> I was an immigrant, had an accent, right. you know, I, I was like, okay, if he can do it, I think I can, I can manage, you know? You know, part of the things with when you when you're an immigrant in America, I think, and anywhere, is you you have these um, inhibition because you have an accent, right? You're not able to really express yourself mm -hmm. as freely or as efficiently as you would want to, and that's always hurts you in a, in a professional setting. Well, at least you think it is, or it's almost a uh, you know. Uh, I don't know how you would call it. It's, it's feel self-conscious. Yeah, you're definitely yeah. self-conscious, you know? So me seeing Danilo at the time, I was like, okay, you know, I, I can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, you have to sometimes just kind of trust in the process and trust in yourself and, and see where it goes and, and do the right thing, I think, ultimately is really why we got here because we were coming out of the financial crisis when we started the firm, you know? Right. Right. Uh, being in finance, being in Wall Street was not a good thing. <laughs> you know, Wall Street just destroyed the world, yeah, you know, so totally. so it was really an interesting time for us to start the firm in hindsight because we, we knew what we did not want to be, which is what Wall Street was at the time. Right. So that really gave us a framework. Um, there's also, you know, almost like a, a sense of like, I, I can do anything. You know, because we've seen how bad it could be, so right. we can do it. If you right. do it this way, we'll do a much better job. And that was that was the idea behind starting the firm. And now we look back 11, 12 years later, you know, where we are, and, and we're super grateful we took the steps to, to, to get there, you know? Right, and I mean, it, when you started the firm, it was very different and probably, it was, it, was a, it was a real risk. I mean, it was a real leap of faith, right, that you had to take to do it. Yeah, I mean, listen, sometimes you just, you know, I don't know, uh, what is it, what, what they say when, when, you, when you don't know something, is that ignorance is a bliss, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you think you can, you know, take on the giants, you know? I think there was a level of like, we were pissed because we've seen how bad things have gotten, you know? No, they still are. Yeah, I mean, they're still industry. bad, right? You know, there's a lot of graft, a lot of, you know, taking advantage of people, but we, the, 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 the way that we started the business, like, hey, listen, we're gonna put ourselves and our clients in the same shoes. We're, not, we're gonna remove any conflicts of interest, and, and hopefully when we incentivize that process, we'll have a firm that is gonna have a positive impact on our clients and on in our community. And that's, that, was the, that, that was the mission when we started it, you know? And that was new back then, right? Uh, well, that whole long-term sort of, you know, view, view of success right. is very, was, very, was also very unusual in yeah. financial services. The, the financial services, or at least our branch of financial services, which is wealth management and investment management, was about selling products, about meeting with clients once and giving them whatever product is hot at that time and kind of moving on to the next client. That was the system that was built for 50 years or so. We wanted to just say, hey, listen, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna be a firm that's gonna really invest in a long-term relationship with their clients. We're gonna invest in a process. We're gonna invest in, in being invest in there. people, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And maybe we don't make a lot of money right away, mm -hmm. but we have those relationships. And, 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 and because we did that investment many years ago, I think the whole, the whole, in, the whole industry has moved towards a, a, a process like this because people finally were fed up 
with like being sold things yeah. and just being like you know lied to about what they could get and so forth you know uh, so I think someone had to do it and, and we were lucky we were kind of on the right side of history because you know uh, that, that is that is the, the everyone needs what we do right right like finance is like the oil that makes the machine go right everyone needs to invest anyone needs to save everyone needs to get ahead financially anyone who makes better decision about their lives and that's what we're here for right uh, but we're here but we can only do that if people trust us right, right. and and I think earning that trust and, and being able to deliver on that trust day in day out is really what differentiates you it's gonna make you successful in our, in, our, in our business. Well, it's also, it's like you're managing, you're managing money that people have saved their whole life. I mean, it's like they're, it's, this is like they're handing you their dreams, you know? And their life savings, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you got to take it with, with a humble, right? You got to understand how important that is. Like someone gives you their life savings or trusts you to help manage your life savings. You know, that is not a small task. You got to understand how, how important that is and treat it with respect and, you know, and, and know what, what you can do and what you cannot do, you know, but also empower people. Like, you know, it, it's, I think one of the things that was done a lot before is like trust me i'm gonna do it and then we'll talk later you right. know you've right. seen it yes. at the firm you've yeah, seen it at, sure. at, at you know morgan stanley and you know they put you in this black box that supposedly has some kind of secret sauce that's gonna get you you know that's this this isn't how the world works you know people are smart we empower them with education, transparency. We, you know, we, we, we're not infallible. We're going to make mistakes, but people know that we're doing a good job. We're trying to do as best of a job and we're getting through whatever the world, you know, gives us together. And I think that's the trust. That's the process that really works, you know? So Greg, uh, you know, you're, you're one of the first people that we hired at GK. You're the only one, right? You're the only, the only one. one who came from, uh, from, from, from the dark side. <laughs> the dark side being the big, white fun, shoe, white Wall shoe, Street. Wall Street. Yeah. What, what made you come over? Like what, what really drove you or, or you know, motivated you to join us? I think, well, I, you know, I'm an icon class anyway. I don't really <laughs> fit in a, an environment that's, you know, corporate and, um, but you know, a lot of the things that I saw when I started it, one of the I worked at two of the big firms, and you know it, you, you can tell right away it's all about selling. Can you give names? Can, can you give names? <laughs> well, J, yeah, J.P. Morgan was my least favorite, probably terrible experience. Um, but you just really see how the system is built to feed this larger machine. You know, uh, it's not really about people anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about what feeds the bank or what feeds you know yeah. um, and I just really wasn't I didn't find that gratifying because I went into this business to help people yeah. you know because I because of my you know background with my my dad and I saw how the breakdown of trust is just sure. it's devastating sure um, but what I saw was a lot of conflicts of interest um, and that was just you know, everybody just kind of, it was like walking by a car accident. Nobody, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, nobody would, would blink bat an eye if they saw bad behavior like that. Right. And, um, you know, so I, I really wanted to find where I would fit best. And I think um, when I first interviewed, I, I, I mean, this is the kind of place that, that GK is. You know what? how I made my decision to work there? Mm -hmm. So I interviewed with, um, the CFO, okay. Danilo, and I asked him, after we were talking for a while, we were having a nice conversation, getting to know one another, and uh, I said to him, I just stopped him in the middle of a sentence, I said, were you raised by your mom? <laughs> and he said, and he said, yes. And I said, I was too. I, I want to work here. <laughs> That's funny. But I, just, I, could, I could tell, like, there was just... Of all the people there, there was an openness, there was a gentleness, there was a genuineness, and you just feel it the second yeah. you walk in the door. Whereas if you walk into one of those other places, it's like you can see the wheels start to spin on the other side yeah. and how they're just trying to figure out how can I, you know, put this in a package to convince this person and kind of, it's almost like a power thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
um, where someone's trying to, well, I'm gonna outsmart this guy by selling him this. Uh, and, and, but whatever you got sold at those companies, whatever I was sold at the company, it, none of it came through. Yeah. You know, it was just. I yeah, know. I mean, we, I remember hiring you. Our hiring process is simple. You meet with all the managers, and if we like you, yeah. and I like you is, is a very subjective term, right? right. Do you fit within the, the, the culture organization, you right. know? And we've never had success hiring anybody from one of these big firms yeah. simply because you are corrupted. You literally are when you work there, you know? So, and we've tried a few times and it just, People come in with a bad baggage, with with different incentives and different ways and sales techniques and things they want to, you know what I mean? And, and that's just not how GK is, is built and that's not the culture we want to be around. One of the things that really inspired me when I first met you is really hearing about how you wanted to get in the business because, you know, your story is, you, ha you, you kind of, this is a a third or fourth career for you. So I'd love for you to tell me more about that story because that's really, for me, it was, it was a really amazing story. Yeah, well, it, it started, I, I had my own business and I had a buddy who was a, an advisor at, at a big firm. And um, he said, look, you, you've got such great skills. We would love, you, you would be perfect in this business. And because I told him, like, I just felt like I was very successful. I was making a lot of money sure. in my own business, but it, there was something missing. You know, right. it was like I didn't have that connection with people. And um, and then, you know, at the in the back of my head, I remembered this experience, my experience with my father, which was he was a very successful um, in the in the in our business. And uh, you know, this big bank came and wrote him a check for sixteen million dollars, and. Instead of retiring, he decided to start this development business. Yep. You, um, your dad was a broker. The dog wants to yeah. say hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Stella. <laughs> um, she wants to be in it. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, he was he was a broker. Yeah. And uh, decided to start this development business. Uh, brought on a partner. Yep. And things just started to get weird. And I was asking him, I was like, why are you buying swampland in North Carolina? It was, it was, and they were just spending money like water. And uh, so finally, uh, we found out that the business partner was a convicted criminal wow. and, and a con man. He had actually shot a guy over a boat. Wow. Um, and the only reason he was out of jail is because they had made some sort of technical mistake in his sentencing or something, you know? Right. Um, so my father had no idea okay. about any of this. Um, it cost him. There was no internet back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he got literally he got like a pile of uh, just you know documents dumped on his doorstep, and that's how he found out. And uh, it ruined his reputation, and it ruined him financially, financially because right. nobody wanted to do business with him. Um, and I just thought, you know, it, it it always stuck in the back of my, my head. I was like, why didn't my father have people around him that? were responsible, took responsibility for him, didn't, weren't looking out for their own interests, but were looking out for his interests too. Right. Um, and I thought, you know, I never want to see that happen to a family. I never want to see a family just, just have their whole, uh, you know, financial life destroyed over money. I mean, it's just, it's just, yeah. and greed and, and uh, you know, just really abuse of trust. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I remember talking to one of the, when I interviewed for the, for the first time, and I told them a little bit about that story. I thought, I thought their jaw, his jaw like hit the floor, you know, yep. when, I, when I told him. Um, but it really does, it's, it's something that is deeply embedded in the mission for what I do, because I know terrible things can happen. Right. Terrible things can happen if you have somebody that does not have your interests at heart, has their own interests at heart. Yeah, we, I mean, we all too often we see that, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, money brings the worst out of people. And it is a lot of great people, but also it can, it can do a lot of damage. So it's, it's I'm sorry that it happened to your family and I'm glad you're doing this. Would you agree that any successful business, a really successful business, has to have something beyond sort of bottom line. I mean, oh. it has to have some kind of 
mission, right? You gotta make you got you gotta you gotta make some you got you gotta have a position in life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's no longer, you know, I, I, I don't care if it's global warming, it's LGBTQ, is you know brown people rights, whatever it is, you know, you, you kind of have a, your customers require you to have a position, and frankly, most businesses are people. You know what I mean? So, I think. For us, for, for GK, and you know this very well, you know, our, our mission has always been to democratize access to, to, to investment management and wealth, and wealth management or, or financial planning, but also to be sustainable in our views and really invest in sustainable businesses and companies, right? Mm -hmm. I think what we're proving from earlier on is you don't have to invest in bad things to make money. You can actually invest in, in, in good things that are good for the environment, for society, right. and still be very successful financially doing it, right? They're not, these two things are not mutually exclusive. Um, well, we, I, just, I just did this today. Like literally, I looked at this one company in my portfolio, I won't say who it is, <laughs> and, um, and I saw that they, had, they continued to donate money to these people that tried to basically overthrow the government. You know, a year ago, yeah, they're still contributing political <laughs> to these to these politicians, and you're like, really? No, yeah, I, I don't, don't want to be. I know which you know company. What I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, I don't want any part it's of that. It's in our chopping list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, you know, it's 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 just the the world we live in, right? You know, the, this new generation. I love it, by the way. You know, like you know, Disney's in the news right now because unfortunately they their CEO did not support the anti-gay, you know, don't say gay legislation yeah. that's happening in Florida, being one of the biggest employers in Florida, you know, and there's a huge uproar on, on that, you know, and, and it's, it's unfortunate because Disney is probably one of the most gay-friendly companies yeah. out there, right? Historically, uh, absolutely. But unfortunately, we have to have a stance, you know what I mean? We do, and, and I think, again, a lot of our clients come to us not because we we can make you a lot of money or not because we have the shiniest slickest office or you know the best suits but they come to us because we have values we invest in things that we think are they represent their values and our values right so mm -hmm. so you know money means something besides money right, right. you know i want to invest in things especially as as you you you, you grow richer and, and grow older you want your your assets or your your wealth to really be representing something that is you right so why not if, if you if you feel you know we see it in LA here you know it's a beautiful day you know but global warming is a, is a, is a threat you yeah. know what I mean you know investing in companies like Tesla and you know Microsoft companies are really spending time trying to figure these problems is, is really important and I think that's that's really what what we what we were showing or what we doing for our clients and that's why they love us you said your dream was to kind of work on Wall Street from the time you were right. a little kid um, but why choose financial why be a financial advisor I mean, there's there's other things you could do you could go work for a hedge fund and make a lot more money you could go work for VC you know venture capital and make a lot of money so why do you think you chose financial advising instead? I think it's the people mm -hmm. I think this is the only branch of finance where you get to interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis and see the impact of your decisions or what you do for them has on their lives and, and I think that brings a lot more satisfaction than just me made 20% a year for the last five years or 10 years even though that's nice mm -hmm. I think the ability to really impact and see that impact play itself and really build those relationships you know some of my clients are my best friends you know they bring so much to my life uh, I think that's really important you know you can work for a hedge fund and you just you know you interact with your your co-workers but that's it you don't know who your investors are you don't really deal with them that much you know, you don't really care about them, the institutions, whatever. Uh, on the v VC side, you know, it's, it's, it's a different business. As a VC, you know, you're, you're looking for an investment and you're thinking 10 years out, you know, it's, it's, it's brutal. Like, you know, you're investing in 20 companies, hopefully one of them makes it, you know? Right. It's, it's not a, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a life that I think is, is very healthy in many ways, you know? Uh, so I think we got the happy medium. We get to use our right side of the brain, or we can think and play with numbers and money and 
you know, make good decisions and so forth, but also we get to build some, some great relationships and you know, allow us to, to really kind of have that, the, those two things work together. And that is, I don't think there's any other financial place you can do both, you know? Yeah, it's, it's really unique in that you, you're, it's not just about money, but it's really, the human relationship is as important, really more important than, yeah. you know, the, the numbers or the spreadsheets. Well, you gotta, you gotta do well. Yeah, okay, <laughs> You gotta yes. make money, yeah. you, gotta, yeah. you gotta have the results, right? So it requ it's more work for sure, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think there is a joy or satisfaction of seeing your hard work and seeing the results of that hard work when you see someone retires and then their kids to college or you know or being able to achieve whatever goals or they're happy because together you make good decisions right. and worked out or went through tough times together just mm -hmm. like we did the last three months yeah. you know and yeah. and we did not make any stupid decisions because we know we kind of stuck it through so going through those emotions you know and and getting through the other side i think it is really rewarding